the, the first place we need to kind of start when choosing your, your sleeping partner, uh, your sleeping bag, is uh, matchmaking. So we kind of need to know a bit about what you are planning to do. And so it's a good time to have a think about where are you going, what time of year will it be, mm. um, how cold will it be, and, and also how do you sleep. Um, often you might find that um, you might be quite a cold sleeper versus someone uh, you know who might be quite a hot sleeper. And so every person is going to be quite different in terms of uh, how they sleep and, and um, how warm they're going to need their sleeping bag to be. When you're going into a like summer kind of camping situation, you've got the car, you've got heaps of space, heaps of extra kind of room to be able to take big sleeping bags. And the biggest that we have here at Torpedo 7 at the moment is the supernova. So when you're car camping, it's all about comfort. Uh, you've got plenty of room in your car. You've got you don't have to worry about carrying it anywhere. It's all, um, you don't have to worry about weight or size so much. And so um, comfort um, is, is what's gonna really make your night a really great night's sleep. So this is our supernova. So um, this is our double for when you have uh, your partner. And uh, this one here also, if you're uh, starting to have a, a, a bit of a fight as well, you can also zip them <laughs> apart and uh, slip them in two yeah. and, and sleep separately. But um, this is a nice double. Um, it's synthetic filled, which does make it a lot bigger. So these are two bags I've kind of picked out. This is actually my favorite, the uh, T7 Ultra down bag. And we've also got our Araki, which is one of our most popular synthetic bags. They're very similar in terms of their actual performance, in terms of how warm they're gonna be. But you'll see here instantly, there's a big difference in size. Um, so uh, that's one of the main benefits um, with going with down. But one of the main benefits with going synthetic is how waterproof or how it's gonna perform when it's wet. Um, one of the downfalls with down is that um, it's a whole pile of, of very lightweight fluff and so when it gets uh, wet it um, all clumps together and the way a sleeping bag is going to keep you warm is the amount of air it's trapping. So um, down is nice and fluffy and traps a lot of air which your body heats up. Synthetic does a similar job by trapping air amongst um, uh, a kind of duvet like material and um, the thing is with the, the synthetic is even when wet it's going to keep you warm. It's not gonna absorb a lot of moisture either. So we do a couple of different models of kids' bags. Um, the most popular I actually like is the Stargazer here, which I uh, wish pull out. So the Stargazer is a great bag for someone quite small. My two-year-old is actually using this at the moment. This one here is a great all-rounder. It mm. um, has a temperature rating of five to 15 degrees. What that means is most of the, the bags will give you multiple ratings in terms of how warm they're gonna be. At that higher warmth, the 15 degrees, that's going to be someone who sleeps quite um, cold. Uh, if you're a bit of a cold sleeper, you'll go with that higher rating. Um, traditionally, uh, uh, just biologically, actually, women tend to sleep a little bit colder than guys mm. uh, on average. It's not a, a, a total 100% of the time, but um, <laughs> you'll tend to find that that, that um, higher temperature limits will be uh, probably more your women's rating. And then there'll be a lower comfort limit um, for uh, those who sleep a bit uh, warmer and um, they can generally go a bit colder. There's usually also an extreme limit that's not always printed on the bags. Mm -hmm. that's, that's the sort of temperature that you'll keep alive in, but you won't have a very comfy night's sleep. This here is the uh, kids one that is packed away. So you can see it's still quite big for a kid's, um, I guess, tramping pack when you think of yeah. bags. So um, the thing with synthetic is you do pay a lot less. This one here uh, comes in at 69 bucks. Uh, and then again, that club discount uh, for Torpedo 7 branded products too. Um, whereas um, going into something down, um, they don't tend to often do down bags in kids' sizes as, as such. But the benefit is you can get something that will fit anybody from yay high to six foot uh, quite happily. And it will okay. last a lifetime with, with down as well. Cool. Um, it comes down to, again, where are they going and what are they doing? I would say actually when they're getting into hunting or tramping or hiking, mm. um, you want to start probably actually moving more from synthetic into down. Uh, synthetic is going to def definitely offer you a better price point and there is um, different types of syn synthetic as well. Um, the basic synthetics, the cheaper ones um, are okay, but mm -hmm. they do do some more premium synthetics which have a hollow core in them, which again traps more air and so for the same warmth and weight, you're trapping uh, more air mm. um, so they can be smaller, lighter uh, or warmer. Totally. And keep in mind as well in terms of hunting, uh, you want to kind of Figure out if you're going to be getting wet a lot, you know, yeah. river crossings, all that kind of stuff. If you're not uh, keeping your sleeping bag dry, synthetic may be a way to go, yeah. potentially, depending on when they're trapping, of course. Again, actually another great point, which we mentioned a couple, couple of weeks ago in our, our how to uh, choose a pack and how to fit it, um, was actually how to pack your pack. Um, you want to put your sleeping bag in something that's going to be waterproof. So totally. putting a, a pack liner in, 
um, our friends at the Mountain Safety Council uh, and us work together and we've actually got a pack liner which we sell which is nice and durable but if in doubt you can also use rubbish bags and other things to keep your gear dry mm. um, or grab a, a dry bag as well which we sell here um, yeah. and uh, that allows you to I should um, remove the compression bag myself and put it straight into one of our little uh, dry bags um, which is a nice lightweight option and keep it really dry so even if you're using a, a down um, that will still keep that uh, performing when you want it to perform. Totally. Um, the other one you can actually do is some of our downs actually have, because of one of the downfalls being with down that when it gets wet it's not going to keep you as warm, um, you can actually either buy either pre-coated or also potentially coat yourself yeah. um, with a water repellency um, to help uh, make the water bead off rather than soak in and uh, that can again help um, make your down more versatile in the wet. Cool, not a huge amount, it comes down to the quality of the fill. So again, in synthetic, we talked about the normal um, fill being um, quite affordable, the better fill having a um, hollow core, which makes it lighter or warmer for the same weight. Um, and then we go into down, and so it's the quality of the down, so or the quantity of the down. So this one here, our Alta 500 has 500 gram fill of down. We also do our Nebula 700, and we have some lighter weight summer um, tramping bags as well, which are lighter and smaller. Yeah. Um, the amount of down, the quantity of, of uh, Synth uh, synthetic or downfill you have will um, make your sleeping bag warmer but it will also make it bigger and heavier. So then the other thing you want to consider is the quality of it. So with the down um, they actually have different ratings in terms of how much loft it has and that loft rating um, they actually test the down they squish it down an ounce of it down to a certain size and then let it puff up and the puffier the down um, the more air it's going to trap but it's all going to be the same weight and size compressed. So the more air it traps the warmer it is and so um, more down, uh, less feathers. Mm -hmm. um, the down is the really soft, fluffy butt of the front of the goose. And um, they also actually get to the point where they actually some of the, the best bags we do actually, the geese are raised at high altitude, so they're even more fluffy plumage and gonna trap even more air. So they can be lighter weight bags, smaller pack down size, but actually really warm or warmer. Uh, comfort rating is um, based on wearing thermals. They actually test the bags um, if they are uh, European tested. Um, they actually have a special machine that actually has a, a lifelike dummy which actually sweats and shivers and, and, and has thermals on and actually can test the, uh, the warmth and how it's actually uh, using thermal imagery to how it's actually escaping from the body. Mm. Um, so that's the, the EN rating you'll see on um, some of our bags or ISO rating. Um, the comfort rating is your when you're uh, um, well hydrated, you're a warmer sleeper, you've got your thermals on and it's not too windy or other bits and pieces, not too humid, then that will be the comfort rating for that. Mm -hmm. The lower comfort rating or the limit of the comfort rating is usually about six degrees or, or more or so less. Um, and that tends to be your uh, rating that most women will use. Women tend to, again, actually sleep on average uh, colder than guys. Yeah. And so um, that, uh, or again, if you are that cold sleeper and um, you're a guy, um, that lower comfort limit is, is probably more realistic to where you're going. It's always better to get a bag that's going to outperform where you're using it as well. For sure. And another tip as well, if you have brought a bag and you don't want to get rid of it, you don't want to buy another one, um, sleeping bag liners yeah. are amazing for that. Cotton is really good. It's like your sheets at home. Yeah. The silk is actually a really breathable um, uh, liner. And so the benefit with breathability, and you'll talk about that when you, you might hear that word when you're talking about down as well. Mm. Breathability, a lot of people don't understand it, but what it, it basically equates to is when you're hot, it will let your heat escape. And mm -hmm. when you're cold, it will help trap that heat. It tends to self-regulate. It's a more natural fiber. And yeah. um, so the breathability basically means it, it regulates it for you. So you can be hot when you're cold and cold when you're hot. Um, and so that silk liner will add up to about five degrees more um, mm. warmth to your sleeping bag. And if you're still finding that's not enough, we also do a Thermalite sleeping bag liner, which yeah. um, again, really cranks the warmth. It's uh, uh, like a polypropylene um, liner. Um, so the other quick tip to if you are finding your sleeping bag a bit too cold is just before you get into it, actually go and do a, a quick run around or 10 star jumps or things like that. Get your heart pumping. You can actually push um, the warm blood to the extremities and it's gonna help warm up that down or that synthetic a lot faster and warmer. They're generally, if you exclude the kids, around about the one kg. But again, it comes down to what type of synthetic and how warm that's gonna be. Um, we've got something like the uh, Stratus, which is our, our most affordable sleeping bag. It's more a summer weight sleeping bag, so it's not particularly warm, it's 6 to 18 degrees, um, and that's about 1 kg. We have uh, something like the Tasman here, which is a better quality fill with that hollow fibre, and that's 1.2 kg. Yeah. And so that's going to, again, a little bit heavier, but going to be a lot warmer. So rather than 6 to 18 degrees, this is 7 down to 3. There's a 
three, I would say, three basic kind of shapes of sleeping bags. So you've got your mummy, your half mummy, yep. and your um, rectangular as well, which tend to be a really entry level basic uh, sleeping Or comfortable. Bags. Yeah, yeah so, for sure. Um, the rectangular is really nice because it, it's nice square. And again, mm. you can unfold it like a big duvet as well. Um, and uh, the benefit with that is that, um, yeah, when it's really hot, you can have it just over you rather than under you as well. Yeah. Um, plenty of room to move around and, and roll over. So this is our, our um, Araki sling bag. It's a synthetic, and you can tell here it's a semi-rectangular, so it is slightly tapered towards the foot. By having a, a slight taper to them, the, the fill is actually closer to your body, so your body has less of an effort to warm it up, yeah. so they tend to be warmer. And also you're cutting all that extra side bit off that you're not really using. It also has a still a separate zip at the foot, so you can undo it and actually still walk around in your sleeping bag. Um, and also semi-rectangular, you can still join together. Yeah. Uh, a full mummy sleeping bag is something like our uh, North Face one here. So this has um, a very tight uh, cut to your feet, because again, you don't need that extra room, um, so you can save a lot of weight by doing that. It's also quite a boxy shape, so that when you're lying flat, your feet tend to point up. So again, you want lots of fill around the top so your feet aren't poking holes between the fill. Um, and again, you want it shaped um, so your, your feet are comfortable. Mm. And that's gonna make it really warm. Now, one of the main uh, kind of falsehoods a lot of people um, believe as well is that um, although it's really good to wear thermals to bed, you probably mm. don't want to go to bed wearing multiple jumpers and hoodies and, and uh, down jackets as well because your body's going to spend all the time warming up that and not necessarily the bag which is going to keep you a lot warmer. Benefits to a woman's sleeping bag is that women tend to be overall on average a little bit shorter um, and uh, <laughs> also um, they again tend to sleep a little bit colder so we tend to go with those warmer uh, warmth yep. ratings uh, or thicker insulations. Um, the other one is actually uh, women's feet tend to be a bit colder when they sleep as well. And so they tend to, some women's sleeping bags may have a bit more fill around the, the feet, foot area. Mm. Um, but in saying that, most are pretty unisex. Um, it doesn't matter too much apart from, again, you will save a bit of um, uh, weight by having a shorter sleeping bag if you are shorter stature. For sure. And women's or guys. Um, and uh, yeah, that's the main difference. You'll tend to find um, down is, is stitched slightly differently. Um, because you want to trap the down from all ending up at the bottom of your feet, mm. um, it's designed to be in, in baffles. You also find that some bags are actually designed that the seams on top don't actually line up with the seams on the inside, so you're not getting that direct um, uh, cold uh, from one seam to another. They actually um, um, trapezoid baffle them. Mm. Um, and uh, yeah, that's. It's kind of similar to something like a down jacket or mm. something. That's what the buffles are there for, just to keep all the down in place, stop it from moving over time, because obviously it is feathers, it's not like synthetics, it's not like a duvet, yep. um, it does shift. Sleeping bag is just one component of uh, your, your full night uh, sleep package. And again, the more comfortable sleeping you're going to be, the more uh, enjoyable your next day is going to be. Um, so uh, starting off again with the car camping, um, you can again get away with carrying something that's a little bit bigger and heavier for that really comfortable like at home type sleep. So this is something like our Torpedo 7 Mondo mattress. Uh, we also do it in a duo for uh, if you've got your partner as well. It tends to be a bit bigger and a bit heavier, um, but really thick, about 10 centimeters thick, yeah. really plush coatings. Um, that foam on the inside is gonna A, uh, inflate itself so you don't need a pump and um, you're gonna keep it um, really comfortable. Moving on to something that's a bit more tramping friendly, um, we also do some self-inflating mats. They tend to pack up again nice and small and uh, entry level price point of about $70. These have a foam inside them, you open up the valve and they actually inflate themselves. Um, yeah. The foam inside helps stop air movement, which again helps you to stay warmer mm -hmm. and um, they're not particularly thick though. Yeah. So the most common type for tramping is the inflatable mats as well. You can often find um, a lot of mats that have an R value which will tell you how uh, insulating they're going to be um, versus the ground. This is our, our Trek Light 6. This is actually a six centimeter thick air mattress, so it packs down a lot smaller and lighter than some of our self inflating and is about sort of 149. Again, six centimeter thick means it's going to be really comfortable. We also have something like the Neo Airs from Thermrest, and these tend to be, this one's actually about half the weight at 300 grams, and these actually have a foil blanket down the middle of them, so mm. these actually reflect body heat. If you actually put your hand on them for about 30 seconds, you actually start to feel that warmth radiating back towards you, which means they're going to be, again, a lot lighter and thinner, but they're going to be really uh, warm to sleep on. And then they do a uber warm one as well, and an uber light one. Um, so this is the next version up. Um, it's just a bit, uh, a bit warmer again, and they have um, a special uh, 
pump sack, which uh, they come with as well, uh, that rather than blow it up with your mouth, um, all you do is open up the bag, uh, connects the bottom onto the valve of the uh, mat, and basically just squeeze the air into it, and it pumps up really quickly. Oh, totally. So depending on what you're wearing to bed, pajamas, hopefully, we've got two different types of thermals available. Thermal. We have the nano cool thermals. These are your basic thermals. Everybody should probably have a pair of these in their pack for tramping or anything, kind of. And then we have Merino as well. We do heaps of different Merino brands. We do Icebreaker and Ones Royale, uh, but we do also do a T7 version which is quite well priced and comes in lots of different colours. First thing you want to try is probably actually just giving it a good wash. You'll find that your body oils and things like that over time will help the, the down will uh, stick together. Totally. So again, also when you're going to sleep, put a beanie on, use a sleep mag line, it'll help keep your bag working for a lot longer. Yeah. Um, so we do do um, special washes for either down or synthetic bags or other gear. Um, and this will help remove all that um, body oils and grit um, and other things and help refresh the down that's in there. Second thing you want to do is, um, again, potentially make sure it's um, nice and fluffy and plump. Mm -hmm. When you're storing a sleeping bag, you want to make sure that it's nice and, and, and fluffy. And yeah. that's what's trapping the air and keeping it warm. So the more you can, uh, when you're storing your sleeping bag, put it in a nice unrestrictive um, bag rather than having something that's been compressed. Um, that's going to help the life of your down and um, when you pack it away just to go away, you're going to find it's going to puff up a lot quicker when you get it out again. For sure, you've got to remember that down is feathers, so hmm. being compressed over time will break those little feathers. Um, and then apart from washing it, once you have washed it, once you've got it um, relatively uh, not dripping wet, um, <laughs> do be careful, you don't want to wring your sleeping bag out um, and the best place to wash it is in a bathtub or a a front loading washing machine or in uh, like a laundromat. Yep. Don't wash your sleeping bag in a top loader where you've got a central agitator, it will destroy your sleeping bag. Um, be very careful uh, when carrying a wet sleeping bag, you want to support it again to stop those internal baffles ripping. Um, and then chuck it in the dryer and chuck it in with a couple of tennis balls. Mm. They'll bounce around, they'll puff up that down, they'll knock it around and, and get it all nice and loose again, from stop it from clumping. They will last you 20 years or more. And uh, final thing, if you're still finding it's still not quite what it used to be, you can actually uh, send it away to places like, uh, there's a company in, in Christchurch called Twin Needles, who can actually potentially even replace some of that down with new down for you. When you are tramping, you do want to make sure that you're keeping up with that maintenance, with any sleeping bag really. So we have obviously the dry sacks. These will keep it dry as well as compress it down a little bit more. Uh, you also want to make sure that you're airing out your sleeping bag if you have the time and the ability to do so. So flipping things inside out yep. um, for a couple of hours if possible out of the sun is a really great way to do that. Cool. Just a few other accessories um, you might want to consider is things like pillows um, or uh, um, mosquito nets, sleeping bag liners, that sort of thing. Um, one thing my wife can't sleep without a decent pillow. Um, I tend to uh, <laughs> get away with something like a buff over uh, one of the uh, cram bags um, with just a jacket or two, yep. um, my clothing in it. Um, but we do sell a few Cedar Summit accessories and other bits and pieces of different pillows um, that will make your, your night sleep a lot more comfortable. Thank you again for tuning in tonight and uh, coming through some bags uh, matchmaking with us. And uh, yeah, see you out there. <laughs>